<laughs> Hello guys, good morning. How are you today? I hope you're fine. How was your weekend? Did you have fun? Did you play video games? Did you watch any movies? How was your weekend? I hope everything was fine. Today, we are going to start a new unit. That is unit 5. Okay? Let's start. But before we start, hoje é o último dia para enviar aquele essay sobre a Underwater City, ok? Não conseguiram enviar ainda? Ok, mas vocês têm hoje a segunda e vocês conseguem enviar ainda hoje, certo? Pode ser um poster, pode ser um vídeo, pode ser um essay, o essay pode ser só um parágrafo, ok? Desde que lembrem, eu quero que vocês escrevam, tá? Nada de copiar e colar da internet, por favor. Quero ver vocês escrevendo, certo? A, as ideias de vocês, a letra de vocês, quero ver vocês naquele texto, certo? Se você só copiar da internet, eu vou saber, viu? Vou puxar a sua orelha. Ok. Last unit, we studied about underwater environment. A unit 4 toda foi sobre underwater environment. Remember? We studied about underwater animals or robots that went underwater. It was everything about underwater. The underwater environment. Remember? A desert is also a kind of environment. I want you to tell me, what is a desert like? How is the life in the desert? Is it cold? Is it hot? What is a desert like? Tell me. Hmm. Tell me the characteristics. Hey. Um, I've got an answer which says hot and sandy. Okay, yes. <laughs> It's rough. Okay. Okay. And where are cold environments? Let's go from hot to cold. Where are cold environments? Tell me the places. It's not in Brazil, right? Brazil is hot. But where are cold? Where? In the Arctic. In the Arctic, okay. What else? Okay, they're they're typing eyes, snow, but they didn't get actually the the question. The Guys, question. where? Eu não quero saber o que, que tem lá nos cold environments. I know. There is ice, there is snow, but where? One person said in Arctic. Okay, okay, in Arctic. In the Arctic, in the North Pole, Canada, Antarctica, ah. North Pole, Groenlandia. Now you are telling me the answers. Yes, very good. So these are some examples of cold environments. Okay. Now, let's go to our book. Take your books and open it to pages 7, 6 and 7, 7. And let's start our new unit, Life in the Extreme. Open your books, let's go. Open your books and tell me, what can you see in the picture? Life in the Extreme. Mm, life in the Extreme. What can you see in the picture? Tell me. The extreme. Sobre o que vocês acham que vai falar essa unidade? Life in the extreme. Rita, they're still talking about the homework they should have done, they should have sent, but they are in doubt what to do, the deadlines. Can you mention? Ok, vamos fazer assim. No final da aula, eu volto a falar sobre o trabalho da Underwater City, certo? Eu faço um uma review aqui bem rápido sobre o que vocês têm que fazer, como é que vocês têm que enviar, para onde, ok? Mas agora, vamos voltar aqui para Unit 5. Ok, they are mentioning a man. A man. Uh, a man on the ice. Uh -huh. Ok. They mentioned, actually, 
even the name of this mm. man, which is Kevin Head. Hand. Very good. That is Kevin Hand. Kevin is our explorer this unit. Where is Kevin? You told me he's on the ice. What is Kevin doing? Look at the picture and tell me. What is Kevin doing? What do you think he's doing? One of the answers... One of the answers were... Uh, um explorador com buraco no gelo. Ok. Great. A person on a frozen lake. Ok. What do you think he's doing? O que vocês acham que ele está fazendo? He's exploring. Mm. And he's posing to a photo. Ok, he's exploring. Nice, good job. Now, let's take a look at his sentence. When I think about life elsewhere in the universe, it gives me an incredible sense of the fragility of life here on Earth and how important it is to protect our home. Do you agree with Kevin Hand? Do you think we have to protect our home? You have to protect the place we live? And how can we do this? Vocês acham que a gente tem que proteger onde a gente vive? Como é que a gente pode fazer isso? Como que a gente pode ajudar a cuidar da terra? Tell me. How? What can we do? And do you agree with Kevin Hand? Vocês acham que ele tá certo? Yes, 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 yes. Many okay. positive answers. Ok, and what can we do? To help to save, to take care of our planet. What can you do to take care of Earth? Tell me. Recycling. Okay, we can recycle. What else? Okay. We can also save water, for example. It's a good idea. Use less plastic. Okay, the photo shows Kevin Hand working in Alaska. How do you think he feels in this photo? How do you think he feels? His emotions? Do you think he's happy? He's sad? He's worried? How do you think he feels in the photograph? What about his feelings? What do you think? What do you imagine his feeling in this moment? What he was thinking? Okay, they're mentioning cold. Okay, yes. Maybe he feels cold. Probably. Happy. Happy. Cold, cold, happy. He's oh. serious. Mm, okay. Now, tell me the name of one animal that lives in extremely hot or extremely cold environment. Can you tell me one animal that lives in a place that is extremely hot or extremely cold? Do you know any animal that lives in extremely hot or extremely cold environment? Tell me the name of the animal. And tell me, how do you think this animal is, is able to survive there? Como é que esse animal consegue sobreviver nesse lugar que é extremely hot or extremely cold? Do you know any examples? Okay, they're mentioning uh, the, the animals. They're mentioning polar bear, mm -hmm. penguin, um, camel. Okay, camels. Okay. And how do you scorpion? Mm, how do you think they survive there? Como é que eles conseguem sobreviver nesses lugares que são extremely hot or extremely cold? How do they survive? Okay, someone said, thanks to his fur and his skin. Okay, nice. 
because of of the amount of fur that they have. Okay. Okay. They you... adapt. They get adapted. Yes, they adapt. That's a nice answer. Yeah. Okay. What can we learn about our planet from studying different animals in their habitats? O que a gente pode aprender sobre o nosso planet? Estudando os different animals and their different habitats. What can we learn from this? O que, que a gente pode aprender sobre o nosso planeta quando a gente estuda os animais diferentes que vivem em vários habitats diferentes? O que, que vocês acham que a gente consegue aprender quando a gente estuda esses animals? Quando a gente estuda esses habitats? What do you think? They're different. I mean, okay. Okay, there are different cultures. Okay. That there are lots of different animals in different places. Okay, yes, that's that true. There are extremely cold places and extremely hot places. Yes, it's also Characteristics true. of different animals. Okay, perfect. Very good. Now, tell me, what kind of animals live in the desert? What kind of animals? I mean, a dog? What kind of animals live in the desert? Tell me. Hmm. Camel. Camels, okay. What else? Snake. Snakes, yes, also possible. I have here some examples for you. I have this one, that is the death stalker scorpion. I have this sand cat that is very cute. I thought this cat very, very cute. And I also have, as you told me, thorn, thorny devil. Thorny devil. I, f I found this animal very cute, also a little scary, but very cute. Teacher Rita, they're mentioning that whenever we think about desert, we think about hot places. Yes, that's true. Now, what about cold places, cold environments? What kind of animals live in cold environments? Animals in cold environments, cold places. What animals live? What kind of animals live in these cold places? Hmm. Tell me, what do you think? Polar bear, polar bear. Okay, I also have some penguin. examples. Okay, penguins, yes, as you told me. Polar bears. And I also have here an example of a fox that live in cold places. And it's very beautiful, isn't it? Okay. In your opinion, what things do animals need to live? Tell me, what things animals need to live? O que, que os animais precisam para viver, para sobreviver? Digam aí para mim coisas que os animais precisam para viver. O que, é que vocês acham que os animais precisam para viver? Ok, water. Water. Food. Food. Good job. What else? Ok, they're mentioning only food and water. Ok, okay. that's home. Ok, food, water, home. Ok. Now, let's go to pages 78 and 79, and now I want you to listen and read, ok? But, calm down. Teacher, eu vou precisar entender esse texto todo? Não. A ideia desse texto agora, que aparece primeiro na nossa unidade, é o quê? 
a gente aprender um novo vocabulário de uma forma contextualizada. Em vez de ele soltar as palavras e dizer, ó, oh, aprenda essas palavras aí, ele traz um texto para a gente entender essas palavras. Então, eu quero que vocês peguem o livro de vocês e, enquanto vocês estão escutando o áudio, vocês vão acompanhando a leitura. Mas eu quero que o foco de vocês não seja entender o texto, to todas as palavras que tem no texto, certo? Eu quero que o foco de vocês fique nas palavras que estão em negrito. Certo? Porque são essas palavras que a gente vai aprender no vocabulário de hoje, ok? Então, enquanto vocês estão escutando o texto, vocês vão lendo e prestando uma atenção a mais nessas palavrinhas que estão em negrito, ok? Are you ready? Can we start? Podemos começar? Vou soltar o áudio, hein? Let's go! smaller creatures that can live in far more extreme environments. Unit 5, Activity 1. Listen and read. Did you ever wonder how polar bears can handle the extreme cold of the Arctic? On a typical day, Arctic temperatures can be as low as negative 30 degrees Celsius. That's really cold. And what about camels? How can they survive in the heat of the Sahara Desert, where it sometimes reaches 50 degrees Celsius? It's because these animals have adapted to their harsh environments. However, like other mammals, the polar bear and the camel can only exist in a certain range of conditions. But there are much smaller creatures that can live in far more extreme environments. One example of an amazing survivor is the tardigrade. Nicknamed the water bear, this tiny organism is less than a millimeter long. Tardigrades can handle temperatures from negative 200 Unit degrees five. Celsius Activity to 151 one. degrees Celsius. They can survive despite a lack of water and oxygen. They can even survive in outer space. In 2011, Scientists successfully sent tardigrades to the International Space Station on Space Shuttle Endeavour. Apart from the tardigrade, there are many varieties of even smaller, single-celled microbes that scientists refer to as extremophiles. These microscopic organisms live in some of the harshest environments on the planet. Some live in places where there are very high levels of salt, like the Dead Sea. Others live within solid rock. Extremophiles like very hot or very cold environments. Strain 121, for example, is a type of bacteria with remarkable abilities to tolerate temperatures of 121 degrees Celsius. It lives on a volcanic vent at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean and feeds on iron. Methanogens, on the other hand, thrive under 18 meters of Antarctic ice, where there is no light and no oxygen. Scientists find these organisms very interesting because they help us understand how life might exist on other planets. We're looking for worlds where the necessary elements for life can be found, explains astrobiologist Kevin Hand. We want to know, what does it take for a world to be habitable? Okay, guys, so did you understand the text? I mean, the words in the text? Eu sei que alguma palavra aí não deu para entender, certo? E é por isso eu trouxe alguns exemplos com Unit as nossas palavras novas do vocabulário para a gente ver juntos aqui, certo? E de repente, se vocês não tiverem entendido alguma palavra, essa é a hora da gente tirar as dúvidas, ok? The first sentence. Animals have to adapt to changes in their environment. So, 
did you understand these words adapt or do you have a question about these words adapt vocês conseguem entender essa palavra to adapt ou vocês de repente ainda tem alguma dúvida sobre o que seja olha aí o meu exemplo animals have to adapt to changes in their environment alguma dúvida sobre essa palavra adapt é uma palavra bem easy né easy easy word então de repente, se vocês tiveram alguma dúvida, coloquem nos comentários, mas eu acho que essa palavra é de boas, né? Many small animals can live in extreme conditions. Live. This word here is live. Many small animals can live in extreme conditions. Se tem alguma dúvida sobre live, can't live in extreme conditions, às vezes, tia, mas não é live. São a mesma palavra com dois significados diferentes, certo? Pode ser o verbo live. E pode ser essa palavra live, né? Estamos no live agora, por exemplo. Mas aqui o sentido é live, do verbo, certo? Many small animals can live in extreme conditions. Live, viver, ok? Polar bears live in the cold environment of the Arctic. Environment. Do you have a question about this word, environment? It's also simple to understand, right? Camels can't handle the extreme heat of the desert. Handle. Essa palavra talvez tenha um pouco de dúvida, porque é uma palavra mais nova para vocês, né? I can handle it. Camels can handle the extreme heat of the desert. Handle. Lidar com. Então, os camelos, eles conseguem lidar com o calor extremo do deserto. Ok? The desert is a very harsh place to live with very little water. Harsh place, a very difficult place to live. Ok? A very rigorous place to live. Few animals can survive a lack of water, food or oxygen. A lack of, we don't have. É uma, a falta de alguma coisa. Nesse caso do meu exemplo, a lack of water, food or oxygen. Ok? The level of salt in the Dead Sea is extremely high. The level. I think this word is also easy for you, right? You remember video games? Ah, let's go to the next level. Ok? Also easy. Scientists are looking for signs of life on other planets. Life is also a word that is very uh, easy for you, right? Life. Whales, polar bears, and humans are all mammals. Mammals. Mammiferous. All of these animals are mammals. Okay? Humans need oxygen to breathe. Oxygen. Oxygen is also a an easy word for you, okay? You, we all need oxygen. Some organisms thrive in extreme environments. Ah, teacher, essa palavra é um pouco mais difícil. Thrive. Some organisms thrive in extreme environments. Thrive, to thrive, é prosperar, conseguir sobreviver. Né? Some organisms thrive in extreme environments. Esse organismo é um exemplo, né? que ele tem menos de 3 milímetros, que a gente acabou de ver aqui no texto. E ele consegue sobreviver in extreme environments. Eles até apelidaram de bear, né? é, é, é alguma palavrinha junto com bear, que agora eu não estou lembrando. É, é o, ele vive em extreme environments. E tem menos de 3 milímetros, olha só. Camels, lizards, and snakes are typical animals of the desert. Typical. Typical is also an easy word. It's similar to Portuguese, right? Typical. So, camels, lizards, and snakes are typical animals of the desert. For example, pratinho is a typical food of northeast of Brazil. Okay? There is a huge variety of animal life in the sea. Variety. Variety is also easy because it's similar to Portuguese, right? There is a huge variety of animal life in the sea. We saw this last unit. Okay, now tell me. Why do scientists study extreme environments and the creatures that live in them? Why? Why study extreme environments? 
like uh, places extremely hot or extremely cold. Why? Por que que os cientistas vão estudar esses animals, esses environments? Why do you have to study? Why it's important? O que, que vocês acham? Por que, que vocês acham que é importante estudar esses environments, esses animals que, que live in these environments? Why is important? Por que é que é importante estudar um lugar que é extremamente quente, um lugar que é extremamente frio e mais, os animals que estão lá, que conseguem sobreviver nesses lugares que são extremely hot, extremely cold? Why? Por que, que eu tenho que estudar isso? Por que, que os cientistas decidem estudar isso? O que, que isso pode mudar na vida das pessoas? Me digam aí. To discover new species. Ok, to discover new species. It's a possibility. What else? Ok. Someone says, vai que um dia você brota num deserto? Yes, that's important. Do nada, aparece no deserto do Saara, preciso saber que lá tem um escorpião que pode me picar e me levar à morte, não é mesmo? Importante. To know how the animals, uh, I mean, to know how the animals uh, can survive. Ok, yes, that's important. To know if they are dangerous. Ok. If they can cause us problems. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Very good. To make money. To make money. Okay. To make money. Okay. Let's keep going. Now, let's answer question four together. Okay? We have to read and write the words from the list and make unnecessary changes. Teacher, mas tu já deu a resposta? Essas duas palavras é só copiar, é? No. Of course, no. But we have eight options for, for uh, to eat space. So I gave you two options from eat space. We are going to answer together. Mas aí, ao invés de você ter oito opções para um espaço, você só vai ter duas. Olha como a teacher facilita a vida de vocês. Em vez de vocês terem oito opções, vocês vão ter só duas para responder cada espaço. E a gente vai fazer junto, ok? Em 2004... National Geographic Explorer Kevin Hand and movie director James Cameron went on a deep sea expedition to a mid-ocean bridge. There, they discovered a uh, of different animals. They discovered a uh, what? They discovered a level or they discovered a variety? Hmm. Tell me. What do you think? They a variety of different animals. Okay, very good. The discovery of a variety of different animals living in this environment or condition. Hmm. What do you think? Hmm. Living in this environment, living in this condition. Condition. Let's see. Living in this environment. 3,600 meters below the surface of the sea. It's a harsh or it's a level place to live. It's a harsh place to live. Yes, good job, guys. It's a harsh place to live because of the high levels or because of the high thrive of poisonous chemicals in the water. Because of the high, the high. What do you think? Level. Very good, because of the high levels of poisonous chemicals. Ah, teacher, mas lá tinha level e não levels. Mas na questão tinha assim, make any necessary changes. Então, a gente precisou mudar, né? Porque estava no plural. Por isso que ficou high levels. There is also a complete variety or a complete lack of light.
lack of. Very good. There's also a complete lack of flight. Então, nessa expedição que eles foram aí, under the sea, tinha uma completa falta de luz, né? Olha só que horrível para descobrir as coisas e aprender sobre os animals. Aí tava tudo escuro, meu Deus. However, animals like giants. Giant tube worms, crabs, and vent fish can thrive or can handle this extreme. They can. Okay, they're saying handle. Okay, they can handle these extreme conditions or this extreme thrive. What makes sense in this sentence? Conditions or thrive? Hmm. Conditions. Conditions, very good. In the last one, although the water is extremely hot and full of chemicals, they don't just survive, they, there. They thrive or they handle? here they thrive very good they thrive good job guys now let's go to the next question next question is question five i want you to tell me the synonyms okay for example number one is to be what is a synonym of to be creature to exist remarkable or to tolerate What do you think? To be is similar to creature, it's similar to exist, similar to remarkable, or similar to tolerate? To exist. To exist, good job. Number two, animal is similar to what? Creature, remarkable, or to tolerate? What do you think? Animal similar to remarkable. Teacher Rita, just before we have the answer, eu queria parabenizar o pessoal aqui no chat que está participando legal, está respondendo uh -huh. as questões. Good Muito job! Bem. By the way, they're saying creature. Very good, guys. I'm very happy to hear this. Very good. It's creature. Number three, interesting. What is interesting? Remarkable or to tolerate? Interesting. Remarkable, to tolerate, what do you think? Remarkable. Very good, remarkable. And the last one to handle the most difficult words. What is it to handle? Oh my God, teacher, it's very difficult. Mm. What is it to handle? To handle, what is it? Come on, it's very difficult, right? Hmm. Tolerate, teacher. Oh my Come god! On. To tolerate. Very good, guys. You're so smart. Good job. Guys, that's it for today, our vocabulary class, ok? I hope you enjoy it. Espero que vocês tenham entendido também, além de ter aproveitado a aula. E como eu prometi, agora eu vou falar para vocês relembrar o que vocês têm que me entregar até hoje, né? Vocês têm uma memória assim de peixe. Tipo aquele filme lá do Procurando Nemo, adore, né? Que esquece de tudo, assim, 10 segundos. Vamos lá. O que vocês tinham que fazer para hoje? Pesquisar uma Underwater City. Quando vocês pesquisarem a Underwater City de vocês, vocês vão me escrever um essay ou vão fazer um vídeo ou vamos fazer um poster sobre essa Underwater City. Eu já até recebi vários trabalhos sobre Underwater City que eu adorei, inclusive, certo? Então, o que vocês têm que fazer é isso. Teacher, mas você disse que não pode copiar e colar. Eu estava pensando em fazer isso. Não, tá? Não. Pesquisa lá sobre a sua cidade e escreve para mim um parágrafo sobre essa, cida sobre essa cidade, sobre o que você aprendeu sobre essa cidade, Ok? Nem que, ah, Tite, mas eu só consegui escrever um parágrafo de quatro linhas. Nem chega a ser assim um essay, uma redação, como você pediu. Tem algum problema? Não, não tem problema, porque foi você que escreveu, certo? Envia para o english.colegiantares.com.br, ok? Teacher Rita, there are some questions here for us to answer. Eles estão perguntando, pode ser em PowerPoint? Yes, it can be. I, oh, oh, ah. 
Meu Deus, travou aqui. O mais importante é que vocês escrevam, certo? Pode ser no PowerPoint, também recebi alguns, adorei, certo? O importante é, teacher, eu posso fazer o PowerPoint em tópicos? Porque eu acho legal? Pode, desde que você esteja escrevendo lá com as suas palavras, ok? Ok. E tem outra pergunta de um top 10... Uh, sim, amanhã. Mythical creatures that you've mentioned that you've Ok, used. amanhã, tá? Porque hoje, como a nossa aula era sobre o vocabulary, eu não queria misturar as coisas, né? A gente tava aprendendo vocabulário novo, algumas palavras e tal. Mas amanhã eu trago o top 10 das mythical creatures. Não se preocupem, ok? Eu não esqueci o top 10. Eu vou trazer amanhã no começo da aula. Ok? Mas eu vou Eles estão outra. atentos, né? Estão atentíssimos, adoro. Amanhã eu vou trazer esse top 10. Não esqueci, hein? Calm down, calm down. There's a question. Tia, se eu escrever e estiver errado, ou palavra ou concordância, eu vou perder ponto? Não. Muito pelo contrário. Vou adorar que você errou, senão você estava tentando fazer, né? Ninguém acerta tudo assim de primeira, gente. Não existe isso. Você está aprendendo, tem que errar mesmo para conseguir aprender, ok? There is no problem. Muito pelo contrário. Se você fizer uma coisa assim... Muito maravilhosa, eu vou procurar o site de onde você tirou, viu? Não que você não consiga, você consegue, eu sei. Mas, às vezes, vocês copiam e colam do site, assim, tão na cara de pau, que até os links do site ficam lá no texto de vocês. Eu fico, ué, o menino colocou aqui até os links pra eu ir olhar. É, uh, não copia e cola não, que eu tô vendo, viu? Eu tô observando vocês. Ok? No more questions, so that's it for today. Bye-bye and see you tomorrow.